Hi, I'm Steve Moriarty, coming to you from moregems.com. Uh, today we're going to start our second series uh, in how to cut gemstones to help you uh, in your quest to be a fine gem cutter. Um, we're going to start uh, this series by showing you how to cut this blue topaz. Uh, this particular topaz comes to us from Brazil. And what's unique about this topaz is that it is a completely natural crystal. Uh, generally, you don't see this nice blue in genuine, untreated topaz. Most topaz starts like this, um, is what we see in the market. This is a treated topaz, much deeper color, um, probably much more beautiful color. We'll see when we're done, but, um, but it, it never originally had any color at all. This was a colorless topaz that was irradiated. This particular material was done in a linear accelerator to give us this uh, Swiss blue color. Um, so it, it is a much lower value than what a natural uh, untreated topaz will be. So this particular topaz weighs a thousand carats, uh, came to us from Brazil. I think it's just under a thousand. It is 198 grams, uh, which comes out to be uh, 990 carats. So big stone, but it has some issues. Uh, if we look inside the stone, you know, you can see the veil that runs across it. You know, this is the first thing we're going to have to deal with because until I cut this apart and we'll slice it on the saw later. Uh, you really don't know what you've got to cut. But it's a really nice crystal, you know, and some would say it's too nice a crystal to cut. The guy that sold it to me, the Brazilian, uh, he thought I should keep it as a natural crystal, but it's not a perfect crystal and it will make a perfect cut gem. So, you know, I'm a cutter and I'm going to cut it and I expect maybe a couple hundred carats out of this piece. So during the cutting of this uh, blue topaz, I'm going to be using my new cutting machine, which is the Ultratech V5. This is the machine I am currently recommending. I've had many machines over the years um, and, and many I've loved and I still have a few that I love. But, you know, the reason I'm promoting the Ultratech V5 is not only the quality of the machine, it is a company that's there to support you. <clears throat> Every other machine I currently own, uh, the manufacturers are out of business, so there is no support from them. Uh, where the Ultratech V5 has been around for 55 years, they also manufacture other scientific equipment, so they're not basing their entire business on cutting machines, which is a pretty limited market. So this is the reason that I've promoted the Ultratech V5. Uh, if you look out there at uh, some of the finest cutters that are cutting stones, many of them will have an Ultratech machine on their uh, desk that they use for cutting. So these are the things I looked at. And now that I have the machine, I can see that it's just built extremely well. And I've cut many fine stones. I've probably cut 30 stones on it so far. So I'm really still an amateur at this machine, but it's very similar to other machines I've owned. So we'll be using the Ultratech V5 to cut this stone. Um, but before we get started cutting this topaz, let me give you a little bit about my background. Uh, me and my wife, Nancy, started business, uh, our wholesale gemstone business uh, back in 1975. So I've been at this for 45 years. Um, we wholesaled to jewelers across the U.S. Uh, my travel overseas started in early 80s. I went to Eder Oberstein, uh, Germany to buy gems, uh, then on to Thailand. Uh, Brazil, Tanzania, Madagascar, which was one of my favorite places for sure. Madagascar is really an extraordinary country for a wide variety of gems and, and uh, just an interesting place to go for wildlife and just a really unique uh, country. Um, from there on to Tanzania, and Tanzania is my current focus. Uh, mainly because uh, Tanzanite is probably 40% of my entire business. So uh, Tanzania is, is there and in my future. Um, I started cutting 
somewhere in the, about the same time I started going to Germany. Uh, somewhere in the early 80s, I started gemstone cutting. A uh, gentleman by the name of Jim Laramore uh, helped me through my first stone. And from there, while I was traveling, I cut gems uh, in my hotel room at night. Um, and, and after a few years, I became proficient enough that I felt that uh, my, really my business was, was promoting my own cut gemstones. And, and that's what we've done ever since. So, so the first step uh, in cutting this topaz would be to map the inclusions and decide where you're going to cut it. Uh, this is an orthorhombic crystal. So a couple of issues with topaz is they have a basal cleavage. So the cleavage is uh, parallel to the C-axis, which will be this flat plane here. So when cutting this stone, you do have to make sure you don't cut directly on that plane. So you need to be 10 degrees off, uh, otherwise you're not going to be able to polish it. Um, so this cleavage plane like that you can cleave topaz you know I haven't seen it be an issue I've sold a lot of topaz over the years and uh, although they say it's a, a an easy cleavage it's not something I see generally in the business I have seen cleaved topaz but but unusual but the concern is is trying to polish on that particular plane uh, you do have to avoid it uh, now when you're looking at these crystals you know you can kind of see what the color is using a dichroscope. A uh, dichroscope, you look through the stone in different directions and you can see what the color is. And, and in particular, uh, most blue topaz uh, would be the C-axis, which is the axis we're trying to avoid in, in polishing, is, is probably the axis of greatest color also. So ideally, you would like to be close to that axis uh, with the table of your stone, again, 10 degrees off or so. I don't know that's going to be possible in this gem, the way the inclusions run, but we'll see once we've cut it uh, um, what it looks like. Now, in, in looking at this stone, this one's transparent enough that you don't need any aid to find the inclusions. But when you look at this, uh, this treated topaz, now they generally tumble these just because it makes the color look better. You know, it'll look a lot richer color when it has a, a frosted surface than if it was totally transparent. So this is the reason that they, they produce a surface like this. Um, but what you can use, this is uh, wintergreen oil, and this will aid in looking inside the stone because the refractive index is fairly close to what, uh, what topaz is. You know, so it does aid in, in most rough you look at. You know, it just makes the, the surface disappear and you can see right in it. You know, there are, you can see some striations in there that probably won't be a real issue with the, with the cut stone, but it'll affect it a little bit. Um, so, so this is the, the wintergreen oil that, that cleans up the surface for you so you can see inside it. But again, this one, we didn't need it because it's just so clear anyway. But you can see where our biggest problem is. Is that veil that runs across it. So what we need to do is mark it for cutting. And just using a permanent marker. You know, it's not always easy to tell exactly where that plane is when you're looking through a crystal face. But because half of this crystal is pretty much unusable, once I determine where this plane is, I can cut 
into the material I'm not going to use, just just avoid this line somewhat and, and cut it a little further into the material, which is actually this end of it, uh, that, that is, is less useful for me because there are some veils that run across it in different directions. So this side is, is only going to cut a smaller stone. So I'll want to be this side of the line, not too far because it's a lot of grinding. Uh, the, the, the closer you are to that veil, uh, the easier your job's going to be. But you also don't want to make a bad cut and, and cut into good material. So you want to stay the, the, you know, do your cut a little further into the side of the material that's not usable. Um, So that said, you know, my, my line, although this, this, some of this inclusion, which is a large feather that runs across it, goes up into here, I'll probably use this line. In our next video, we will be sawing this piece of topaz. Uh, once it's sawed, I can try and determine what to cut from it. Uh, we'll dop it up and start faceting. So thanks for watching this video and, and uh, look forward to seeing you in the next one. If you enjoyed this video, watch the next video here. Also subscribe, hit the bell to receive notifications of our latest gem-related videos. Thanks.